Today is August 19th, 2024, and Reactor Magazine has released preview chapters 5 and 6 for Wind and Truth. In this video, I'll be giving my thoughts on these two chapters. Chapter 5 is titled, What Might Still Be. It starts off with another epigraph from the in-universe book titled, Knights of Wind and Truth. Whoever wrote this epigraph considers themselves both a historian and a philosopher. So it's probably not Kaladin or Zeth that's writing these epigraphs, which is kind of what I had been thinking the last couple preview chapters. So who considers himself both a historian and a philosopher that we know about? I think Yasna could be a pretty good possibility. She definitely definitely fancies herself as a well-rounded scholar, and her studies include both history and philosophy. Let me know in the comments who you think might be writing these. So this chapter is from Shalon's perspective, and she's still at lasting integrity, waiting on the Windrunners to come fly her and Adolin back to the Oathgate. She started to sketch a lot more, which she kinda hasn't done for a while since she got to lasting integrity, and she keeps noticing this strange face of a feminine singer with an angular carapace showing up in random places in her art, but she doesn't remember drawing the faces. She thinks it could be due to the effect of an unmade sending her a message similar to Reshafir and Yurathiru back in Oathbringer. And of course, we saw a depiction of this face show up in that sketch of the star sprint that we got with preview chapters one and two. A lot of people have been speculating that this is Ba Auto Mishram. I think I even speculated that in my reaction video. We'll talk about this a bit more later in this chapter. We see that 12 honor sprint come to answer Adolin's call to arms to bond humans. And Adolin's a little disappointed in this small number because out of a population of hundreds of honor sprint, 12 isn't really that much, and he expected more. But 12 is a lot better than none. And we get to see how the transition of Spren from Shadesmar to the physical realm happens. We find out that they slowly fade away in Shadesmar, rather than disappearing in a blink. This is pretty cool to see the transition firsthand. Notum also shows up with these 12 honor Spren, and he almost decides to make the transition with them, because he feels that he's been rejected from the other honor Spren in Last integrity. But he really doesn't want to bond a human. He loathes the idea. So Noda makes the decision to not make the transition yet. He may in the future, but for now he's going to stay in lasting integrity and try to rally more support. So hopefully other honor Spren will end up making the transition if he's able to persuade them. To me, the most interesting part of this chapter is when Colette comes and sits next to Shalon. He informs her that he's not going to make the trip back to the physical realm with her and Adolin. And he also asks if Shalon plans on releasing Ba Auto Mishram if she manages to find her in the spiritual realm. She's probably just going to bring the gemstone back to Dalinar and let everyone decide together. And honestly, I think that's a pretty good plan. Um, I don't think that she should make that decision on her own. As Ashar tells her, Ba Auto Mishram hates humans. So who knows what she would do if she's freed. Shalon sketches Kalek as he's sitting beside her and she shows him the picture after she's finished and he is taken aback. He asks Shalon how often she does this. Shalon at first thinks that he's just talking about sketching people, but no, he's talking about something much more interesting. She's apparently been drawing upon fortune to glimpse into the spiritual realm to see the possible selves of others, and then she pulls one of those possibilities forth and sketches that possibility. Very interesting. Kalek also tells her that the reason she's able to do this is because of her bond with two sprint at once. I guess strange things happen when Nile bonds are overlapped, and there used to be rules against bonding multiple sprint. Very cool, because we don't really know very much about fortune yet in the Cosmere. We know that fortune is what the shards use to glimpse future possibilities. We also know that Hoyd uses fortune to end up where he needs to be, even if he doesn't know why he needs needs to be there. So hopefully this book will delve into fortune more and we'll learn a lot more about it. Shalon also mentions the strange faces that have been appearing in her artwork to collect and he confirms that it is an interpretation of Ba Auto Mishram. So everybody that speculated about this face being Ba Auto Mishram was correct. We also learn an ancient Rosharan word from Kalek. 
That word is pantotic, and apparently pantotic means unnerving. This chapter closes out with the five Windrunners showing up to take Adolin, Shallan, and some of the people with them back to the Oathgate. Then we get to chapter six, which is titled Nobility. We get another epigraph, and this one's very interesting. The author of the epigraph is now speaking of two sources that they have as witnesses of the events of cleansing Shinovar and of the part that the wind and the heralds played in this cleansing before they vanished. So these two witnesses are probably Kaladin and Zeth if I had to guess, or maybe even Kaladin and Shallan. Let me know who you think these witnesses are in the comments. I also am wondering what would have caused the heralds to vanish? Could it be that the Oath Pact is reformed and the heralds are sent back to Bray's? Or could they be killed by Razium daggers and that's why they vanished? It'll be interesting to find out. So this chapter is from Kaladin's perspective and it opens with him hanging out in a room with Dalinar and Zeth. And the glyphs on the back of Dalinar's uniform are being pointed out. The Tower and the Crown. That instantly made me think of this death rattle from The Way of Kings chapter 53 epigraph, which reads, He must pick it up, the fallen title, the tower, the crown, and the spear. So could Dalinar be representing the tower and the crown and Kaladin be representing the spear? Every one of Kaladin's chapters opens with this spear symbol. I'll talk about this a little more here in a bit. We see that Kaladin thinks even when Zeth is relaxing, he is fantotic. Kaladin still seems to be feeling pretty good about this, the upcoming events, and he still is planning to become Roshar's first therapist. Dalinar tells Kaladin that he's sending Zeth along with him on his journey to Shinovar, and Kaladin isn't very happy about this news. He views Zeth as unstable, but that's exactly Dalinar's point. He's hoping that Kaladin will be able to help Zeth and get him to a better mental state. Dalinar wants to speak in private with Kaladin, and he asks Zeth if he'll be fine on his own for a while. And Zeth's answer definitely reinforces Kaladin's concerns about him not being stable. He talks about how he's never alone because of the voices he hears in his head. We see that now that Navani and the sibling have bonded each other, the tower has a bubble around it, like a, like a little atmosphere that keeps it warm. We learn of an ability that Kaladin has apparently had the whole time he's been a Radiant, but he's just never mentioned it because it happened instinctively. He can sculpt pressure and air around around him and other people that he's lashing to create a little invisible bubble of thicker air around them. This is helpful when they're up this high because of how thin the air is. So Kaladin is now trying to be more conscious of this ability rather than just letting it happen instinctively. Kaladin is noticing once again that Syl is acting more and more human. This time she's mimicking breathing with her chest suddenly rising and falling. This might be even more evidence for a potential Syllidan relationship. Kaladin ends up agreeing to try to help both Zeth and Ashar. He'll try to be a good therapist and improve the mental state of both of them. Dalinar makes sure that Kaladin knows just how dangerous Ashar is, and that he likely has access to the Honor Blades now that he's in Shinovar. And I think that he has access to more than just the Honor Blades. He likely has access to hundreds, if not thousands, of secret Shin Shardbearers. I actually made a video on this theory of the missing Shardbearers. Shard Blades. The video is titled, Where Are All the Shard Blades? And I definitely recommend you guys check it out if you haven't already. There's another mention of the Colin Glyphs. Dalinar asks Kaladin if he still has the cloak that he gave him when he first joined his army. That cloak has the Colin House Glyphs on the back. So once again, Brandon is drawing attention to the Colin Glyphs, which are the Tower and the Crown, which brings me back to this Death Rattle. He must pick it up, the Fallen Title, the Tower, the Crown, and the Spear. So now Kaladin is going to be wearing this cloak with the tower and the crown on the back, and he represents the spear himself. So I really think that this death rattle is alluding to something that Kaladin will do in Shinovar. I already compared it to the story of Fleet in the last couple of reaction videos. I think the fallen title might be the Shard of Honor. Maybe Dalinar unites the splinters of that shard and Kaladin picks it up. Or I've seen people speculate that maybe two people can pick up a shard. That would be really interesting if both Dalinar and Kaladin picked up the power of honor. I feel like this death rattle can be interpreted in two different ways. In one way, the word he could be meaning the tower, the crown, and the spear. In that sense, it would 
read, the tower, the crown, and the spear must pick it up, the fallen title. Another way to interpret it is that the fallen title is referring to the tower, the crown, and the spear. So in that version, it would read like this, he must pick it up, the tower, the crown, and the spear. I don't really know which way to interpret it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And we do know from this word of Brandon that the events alluded to in this death rattle have not happened on or off screen by the end of Rhythm of War. So they are yet to happen. This part took me by surprise. Dalinar offers Kaladin to be the heir to rule Yurithiru and the Knights Radiant in case anything happens to him or Navani during this contest of champions. And at first Kaladin says no, he's too broken. But by the end of the chapter, Dalinar convinces him to consider it. So Kaladin reluctantly takes the sheet of paper and puts it in his pocket. So yeah, Dalinar offered him the most powerful seat in all of Roshar. And I think Kaladin would be great in this position. I mean, he's proven time and time again that he's an amazing leader. He really cares about those that serve under him. Even if he doesn't like the leadership positions he's found himself in, he's good at it. But these are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts about these two preview chapters in the comments below. I'll be making these reaction videos every Monday from now until December 6th when Wind and Truth officially releases. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you know when I post these reactions. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron or a channel member. You'll also get access to a bunch of different perks. Both of those will be linked in the description below. And if you want to join in on the conversation about the Cosmere, make sure you join the Discord server. That will also be linked in the description below. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next one.